Hi, I'm Jared Hillam. Back when hard drives were prevalent in personal computing, it wasn't uncommon for computers to get sluggish, and a remedy for that was to defragment your hard drive. Those who lived through those days will remember defragmenting took a long time, and sometimes people just leave it to run all night. So the way the defragmenting worked is the chunks of data on the hard drive would be repositioned on the platter so that they were in closer proximity to other functional fragments. And this ensured that when the hard drive was reading data, that it could acquire everything without physically moving all over the platters to fetch it. And it really worked. I mean, suddenly it was like you had a new computer. Now, the impact of data proximity to read speed is a real factor when it comes to large data sets. And for this reason, you'll find many database systems provide the ability to partition data. See, partitions make it possible for the database to ignore irrelevant data during a query. And there's a couple of strategies that you'll see in cloud data platforms, which are very interesting. The first is a use case oriented partition strategy. This would mean that you'll partition based on an attribute of the data's usage. So for example, you might partition data based on a user's region, or maybe you'll partition based on a column of data. And typically this would be a column with a contained amount of potential values like departments, states, uh, species, and you can even stack these partition strategies on top of each other. So for example, you might partition by state and then by city, thus allowing the query engine to get right down to the data needing to be queried. Now, what this means is that a really good partitioning strategy can make all the difference in terms of performance, simply because it reduces the amount of data that it has to scan. Now, typically in a use case oriented partitioning strategy, you don't want to select a column that has a large number of potential value types. So for example, you wouldn't want to use a person's user ID. This would just create an explosion of little files and defeat the purpose of partitioning the data, right? Well, yeah, there's another way of partitioning that sort of turns this on its head. And the second method is a storage contained method of partitioning. In other words, what dictates the separation of one partition to the next is literally a cap on how much allocated space each partition has. And that allocation space is pretty tiny. I mean, if the data were uncompressed, it would be somewhere between 50 to 500 megabytes. And with modern compression, it might be something in the teens of megabytes. Now, when you use this storage method along with a columnar representation of the data, and if you need a kind of a refresher on columnar data stores, I do have a video in the video description. Uh, anyway, by, by using this columnar with this partitioning method, you get a very tightly scanned query. This is because each of these little partitions is stored with an indicator of a minimum and maximum value they're in. So when a query is run, it will only open the partitions that fit in the min-max ranges the query is asking for. And this is really where my earlier defragmentation example comes into play. See, when you're storing a partition this way, it's easy for data updates and new data to occupy partitions that are scattered across the storage. And what this means is that instead of the query engine opening a handful of partitions using the min-max, it has to open hundreds or even thousands of them. So one of the critical components of partitioning with this method is the reclustering of data so that the min-max values occupy the least amount of partitions. This makes the queries wickedly fast. Then you couple that with some effective table architecture and it makes for a very effective compute method. Perhaps one of the big things about this is it's just easy to start. You don't have to pre-architect all of your partitioning methods. It just simply is kind of ready to go. Now, if you'd like to learn more about these partitioning methods and which vendors use which method, I recommend you take a look at the white papers identified in the video description. And if you're looking to build out a solution for your organization, I recommend you reach out to Tricity to talk with a specialist.